Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. And I'm Kevin. And we are back, finally, with another battle report. We have been keeping busy. On hiatus, doing little projects. <sighs> yeah, we got the campaign rules out. Uh, we've been building out uh, the website. So we're going to be releasing, probably soon, within the next month or so. Webalytics. Webalytics, <laughs> yeah. Battalytics online. So we're going to have um, a whole bunch of stuff coming your way. Uh, and on top of that, Kevin. You've been you've been working on some some side projects yourself on the three D printer in your lab. Yes. Um, so what do we got? What do we got? Something special tonight. What's cooking? <laughs> so in uh, in the big reveal for our double blind rules, I created some radar blips, some mm. mech signatures to use in our rules for when units mechs are out of visual and sensor range. Yep. So I created one per weight class, an assault, a heavy, a medium, and a light. So yep. you can tell that variance. Right. Um, so we're playing a slightly modified hybrid, kind of abstracted version right. of the sensor and visual range rules where um, we're basically allowing each other to see the weight class, not the tonnage, but the general weight class yeah. in advance, sort of like a replication of like a mag sensor or whatever it is. Right, yeah. Um, and just incorporating, cor incorporating the medium radar range where we're just going to make that a reveal. There's no roll. There's no like you know check to see whether you can sense them. It's right. just, it just happens. So yeah, you know it's it's a simplified one, but one that should add that sort of element of the unknown. Yeah, it's that fog of war. It's sort of very very reminiscent of like playing Mech Warrior, right? Um, so we have visual range where you know so it starts as a radar blip, right? And and we know the weight class. When you when you get within visual range, you replace that radar blip model with the actual model of the mech. Yep. So if, if I'm playing a stalker and you know you come within, you can draw a line of sight to it. Um, I replace that model now. You know, but he still can't look at my record sheet. You're not allowed yep. to see you know what damage I have or what variant I have or how much heat I have. None of that stuff. Once you're in sensor range, which is usually less than, but not always less than visual range, right? So be pitch black and heavy yeah. fog and downpouring but um, you know once you get within sensor range then you know you have full access to the record sheet so it's gonna be pretty exciting um, and again you know you mentioned this the rules are out of tactical operations we kind of hybridized some stuff from Do you know the age strike. number <laughs> 232 no I don't know um, well, maybe we'll put it in the comments I think it's yeah. in one of the appendices in the back uh, there's this huge table um, but you know speaking of the huge table uh, what's cool is you know things like weather and time of day have a very tangible impact on the tactics, right, and the strategy in the game. And so it's really what attracted us to right. sort of the double blind rules to begin with. Um, I'm always terrified when I don't know what Kevin's bringing to the table. This is just going to exacerbate my fears. Um, so from from now on, when we do battle reports, right, I'm not going to know what you're bringing to the table until I'm in visual range, right? And, Except and, for the one thing we're going to know in advance is the weight class, that's right? That's and right. the number, right? The number of signatures. Mm. Right, so, so we're going to have a different radar blip for vehicles, aerospace, or right. different classes of unit, right? Whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so we'll know their mechs, we'll know even the weight class of the mech. Yeah, but that's good it. point. That's it. That's no it. variant, no chassis until <laughs> sensor. <laughs> until missiles are flying. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, so let's talk about tonight's game, shall we? Yeah. So we've got a 5,000 BV match. Seize ground. Seize ground, right. So this is going to be cool because there's going to be a lot of maneuvering. Um, we're also playing with a little bit of fog, a little light fog sprinkled in there, maybe drizzling. Yeah, I don't reduce know. Reduce the visibility so that way we can show off sort of the rules and just honestly try them out ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's that. What are you bringing right? to the table tonight? Oh, what am I bringing? So I have one light mech, two mediums, and a heavy. Mm -hmm. and, and who is your... Who, who am I fighting? Who are you fighting? Good quick. Slight <laughs> fog, you don't know yet. Uh, so I'm bringing uh, my fifth Atrian Knights back to the table. I haven't played them in a long time. Really excited. So they're my Free Worlds League unit. Um, and yeah, so one light mech, two mediums, and a heavy. So you can you can start thinking. Mm. Imagining what, what terrors I'm going to unveil. I have a, 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 an obviously a different list. Obviously. I'm bringing my, my heavy lights to the table. So three <laughs> light mechs and a medium. Oh, wow. So it's slightly different. So you either got really pow like really high BV lights or really good pilots. Yeah, one of the two. 
We'll have to see. And what are you playing, Taurians? Yeah. Yeah, the Taurian Concordat. The Redstone Rangers have, have come back for a mm. border, border skirmish. Again. Frontier, frontier fight. I just want to be friends with the Taurians, but you just keep coming to my planets. This well, is, you know, unclaimed space. Think, well, that's what you think. I beg to differ. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out who's right in just a minute. Whose ground is this, Kevin? Seize it and find mm. out. All right, so let's get to the battle grid. Let's check out these new rules. I'm excited about it. So guys, stay tuned. It's coming right up. are we are deployed the free world's league on the far side of the map here nice spread out formation not ideal but necessary for a seize ground mission Kevin's Tarians looking real good there Kev um, check these things out though very cool stop looking at my sheets oh that's what you're hiding over there your record sheets I see that so these little the little radar blips look just like our little mech puppet that we use in the damage readouts. So very cool. Proprietary DFA merchandise. Uh, so Kev, any thoughts on your deployment before we get started here? Uh, I am both terrified and excited. <laughs> As always, ask me at round five. <laughs> ask you at round five. All right, guys, well, listen, we're coming right back after turn one movement. All right, so it's turn one, after movement, uh, we're back, some action happening. So I won initiative. Kevin, what are those sneaky Tarians doing under the cover of this light fog? Just moving forward, you know, using, we have a lot of cover to use, not that we need it. There is a light fog That's that has descended in the region and we can only see up to 30 hexes equivalent of, you know, was that mileage? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so limited visibility, but 30 yeah. inches is where we are at. Yeah, that's 900 it, meters, and right? And our first targets have been identified. That's right. So we have two mechs in visual range. Um, I uh, revealed a Clint. And I a Wolf Hound. Right. And that Clint. No surprise there. That Clint will be firing <laughs> on your Wolf Hound. So shooting is coming up. I don't anticipate any hits. I do need an 11, but we're going to get into it and see. All right. All right, so here we are, that Clint revealed, 
firing through the fog at the wolfhound emerging on the edge of the forest. Uh, firing an AC2, Kevin. Mm. Don't want to give me any head spot. Um, obviously, at this range, it's the only AC that could be firing. So, I need an 11 to hit you. It's not easy. Yeah, that's... Uh... Barrel jams. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. It is the uh, the end of turn two movement. I lost initiative, and uh, we have visual contact across the board here. So here's what happened. Uh, I had my Clint out on the flank. I pulled him back around uh, in the back line here. Um, my heavy, the rifleman, now revealed, moved up. A Centurion, those guys are staying in lockstep. Uh, both of these mechs are firing down at that recently uh, revealed Whitworth on the other side of the table there. Uh, and then my Wasp jumped up on this hill here, really ran. Um, but he's going to be firing an LRM-5 down at the Whitworth. So this Wasp has been modified, swapping out that SRM-2 in the leg for an LRM-5 pack. So he's going to be shooting down... Uh, at that Whitworth. Um, and the Clint, of course, torso twisting, firing over his shoulder at that Wolfhound as well. So, Kev, the Tarians, what do we have? Hey! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, what was revealed on our side, we have the Raven coming up this flank, and Whitworth coming up the middle, and Toro, first mm. time on the channel, my Tarian mascot, coming up the middle. So, so he's cool going to be firing... Over at that Centurion with a PPC, two LRM-5s, Whitworth unloading his LRM racks. Yep. Going at the Centurion as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that is not a lot of love at the Centurion. Okay, um, and also we should note that the Raven and the Wasp are in sensor range, uh, which means, I don't know if, if you can see, we've got our sheets turned up here, so we'll be able to track damage. I know what weapons and variants. She's going to spy on my sheet creeping up. Um, so that is, uh, that is exciting. Now, um, we're ready to shoot. Here, it. here it comes. Kicking off with the Atrian Knights, the Clint firing over its shoulder, AC2, at that incoming Wolfhound. Uh, need a 10 to hit as the Wolfhound has now closed the long range of that AC2. Here we go. I'm looking for a 10. Just miss it. All right, we're going to move right on to the Rifleman. Now, the Rifleman firing two... Auto Cannon 5s at that Whitworth. Uh, I am going to need 8s to hit. Very doable here. Ha! Damn you, Kevin. Poor piloting. <sighs> just too much fog, I guess. The Centurion will just roll right through here. Firing at the Whitworth. We're at extreme range, but we have an LRM-10 and a PPC. Ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> What is on that bearing? You don't know yet. Um, so this guy needs nines to hit on both of these weapons, both at extreme range. So here we go. I am just, uh, it's either ones on one die or... Yeah. That's terrible. All right, and last we've got the Wasp. The Get Wasp needs a 10 to hit. Here we go. Nothing. So a total whiff across the board by the Atrium Knights. Kev, how do you feel... It's just round two, man. All right, all right. You're staying. You're staying cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get all excited now, just to be head popped in a couple rounds. That's true. <laughs> that, that's been known to happen. All right, so we'll come back in a second here on the Tarian side and see if they can share uh, the unlucky die rolls. <laughs> all right, it's it's looking good, Kev. Love the paint job on this guy. Starting us off, he's firing across the way at that Centurion with. Two LRM fives, those cool shoulder mount racks, and the PPC. I need nine. This is plural. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, but the PPC, darn. That's disgusting. I don't like it. But I'm happy that PPC missed. So rolling for clusters here. Just one of them, and we get a minimum damage on one. So I'll use a <clears throat> the tiny die for that. All right, cool. All right, location. All right, so left leg left and torso. Yeah, left torso. On that left side, we'll see. I think the Centurion should be okay. But you never know when it's Kevin. All right, Whitworth's turn, firing those LRM 15s, two of them, over the Centurion. Also needs nines. 
Darn. You were worried. I could feel the sweat. I, <laughs> it's dripping on the camera <laughs> right now. All right, so that is, uh, that's turn two shooting. Just Some a little love tap. tap. Just a little love tap. Let us know you're in, in town here. So we'll see what happens. Turn three coming right up. All right, we are back. Turn three, the action is heating up here. So, got a full reveal on all the forces. However, now, Kevin, you have scanned all of my mechs, so you know. You know what's under the hood here. Oh, yeah. Take a look at my, my weapon spread. Got the Centurion packing a PPC, LRM-10, uh, medium lasers, um, that Clint with an AC-2 large laser, uh, and the Rifleman. Uh, pretty standard AC-5s. One large laser, though. Downgrade one of the large to a medium, add some heat sinks and armor. So, exciting stuff going on here. Um, I want initiative. You had to move first. Tell me. So pretty much everyone had like a forward advance. The Whitworth and the Toro kind of split a little bit and the um, Wolfhound is just beelining it up that side behind that building there so he can't really be shot at or shoot. Some of the thing the Raven doesn't have much to do because your Wasp disappeared. But the Toro and the Whitworth will be dumping the same armament that they did last turn, but this time into the Rifleman. Okay. All right, yeah, so uh, as far as things go right now, you control one quadrant. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, you control two. I only control and I'm one. you're contesting your back. Right, because you're contesting that one. So you sort of outmaneuvered me. Um, I made the conscious decision to uh, hide the Wasp. So the Wasp is here. He just kind of backed up. He'll be lobbing LRMs into that Whitworth. I've got the the Clint, right, he tore across this way. He is turning, firing, large laser and AC-2 at the Whitworth. Two AC-5s and a large laser at the Whitworth. PPC LRM-10 at the Whitworth. So mm. we're hoping if I can get a lucky shot and maybe hit some juicy LRM-10 ammo, maybe we'll end 15. up tying one for one. But, oh, they're LRM-15s. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you upgrade? Yeah. I'd say. Uh... Dirty. Sensors say there's, Sensors there's sell more me. in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so uh, that's going to be interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, shooting's coming right up. We're going to kick it off with those sneaky Tarians. All right, Toro is starting us off. PPC, two LRM5s at that rifleman. Need eights. He's within long range. Oy. Oh, my God. Can I redo that? <laughs> can, we, can we reshoot it? <laughs> no. That's phenomenal. All right, let's move on. The Whitworth. Two LRM racks. Details also needs eight. Into that rifleman. Love the paint jobs. Love the, love the target paint. Oh! Woo! There we go. Oh, boy. Missile's coming in hot. You're going to need... I uh, know, I know, I know. You're going to need three and three, All right? Because right. this, this is no standard <laughs> Whitworth. I got, I got really excited. <laughs> Uh, three and three, and then you got two fit two fifteens or do ten and a fifteen. Two fifteens. Yeah, and that's gonna hurt if they don't hit. So first one. This is like a catapult. All of them. Second one. Ooh, none of them. All right, so that's gonna be seventeen missiles hitting this rifleman. That could have been bad. Pretty good. I got a little CT, left torso, right torso. Yeah, so a nice spread across mm. the center. Fifth Atrian Knights looking to strike back, focusing fire on that Whitworth emerging from the fog in front of the forest. So I'm starting with my CN9, my Centurion. Needs eights on both the PPC and the LRM10. Here we go. All right, well, it's something. Better than nothing. At least it wasn't the PPC. Well, that's that's what you say. All right, so ten points of damage coming in, and we've got CT and left torso. Clint's up next. Firing down at that Whitworth needs nines and tens. Ugly numbers, Kevin. Nine on the AC2, ten on that large laser. Nothing again. All right. So we're going to go back here around to my side of the table. We're going to just pick up our dice for that rifleman and keep this thing rolling. Actually, you know what? We're going to start with the wasp. Let's see if we can lob an LRM-5 in there. Uh, he needs a 9 to hit. Give me something good. Ooh, all right. 
Looking for the cluster. Not bad. Another five points on that Whitworth. All right, center torso again. Not bad. Lastly, rifleman. Need sevens for everything. Large laser, two AC5s coming in hot at that Whitworth. Looking for all CT. Here we go. So first to hit again, need those sevens. Uh, almost a full house. There's that one creeping at the bottom of the screen there. So that one's a miss, but I got one large laser and an AC5. So we're, we're looking at a piloting check. But let's see where these shots land. All right, so just missed. All right, so we got left torso and right leg. Turn three damage report on the Redstone Ranger side. The Whitworth makes himself known up the center of the battlefield, and the entire Atrian Knight's Lance primes that mech up. Damage to the left torso, center torso, right leg, armor holding up so far. And the Toro, after a few turns of alpha striking, up to 11 points of heat, looking at movement and gunnery penalties. Now, on the fifth Atrian Knight side, things are looking okay. Uh, the Rifleman, taking some LRM fire across the torso sections. Centurion in the prior round also taking LRM fire from the Whitworth and Toro. Uh, damage to the left torso and left leg, but overall the Lance in very good shape. We are back after turn four movement. Uh, so it uh, it's continues to be a dance of death here. Um, I won initiative, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it <laughs> yeah. doesn't feel that way. Uh, so Kev, you want to kind of run through uh, what you guys have done? Yeah, Raven came flying up that hill only to find no wasp. No wasp. Uh, Toro planted. He's running pretty hot, but he's in good range, so he's sitting pretty kind of. Whitworth kind of backed up into that forest, just at the edge of it. And Wolfhound also backed up, just getting a sneaking shot at that Clint. But the other two are lobbying their, lobbing their... <laughs> LRMs at that Clint as well, so it's a lot of focus fire. Oh there. wow! Okay, that poor. It's Clint. tough to hit, but if we hit him, yeah, it could he's hurt. Uh, yeah, seventy-two points but on the armor. We are factor, contesting so. all zones. You're contesting all zones, our back. and you're controlling your back to. I mean, I'm getting. I, I I don't know. I mean, we rolled randomly at the moment. For this anything mission, could happen, you know. But the speed was killing me, and I think I, I think I misdeployed. I said that to you earlier. I I don't know, um, but we'll see. Uh, so you double blinded yourself. I double blinded myself. <laughs> it's true. So this wasp jumped into the woods. Um, I had the initiative there. So the raven came around the corner. He fled. He's going to be lobbing LRMs down um, at that Toro. The other three on this side of the map. So the Centurion stayed put. He's going to be firing PPC LRM 10 into that Whitworth. The Rifleman. Uh, I moved here to kind of flush that Wolfhound out, um, but you kind of backed him out, and, and now that Clint's in trouble, so I sort of regret doing that, but it is what it is, firing at the Whitworth, two AC-5s and a large laser, and the Clint firing AC-2 large laser at that Whitworth in the woods. So, hoping that the Clint stays in one piece, you've got a 4-3 to three lead on me now, if I don't kill anything, and things stay as they are. That lead will expand. It will. It'll become to a six, six to three. To three, you get nothing. <clears throat> Which is major victory territory. You get nothing. I get nothing. This is not going well. So, uh, shooting guys coming right up. We're going to start with those Tarians. All right, Wolfhound kicking off the action. Three mediums across the side to the Clint. He needs nines. Mm. Nah. All right, Tor needs to cool down. Just the two LRM racks. Uh, he's running hot, so he needs eights to hit that Clint. One of them. Did I roll a mini die? <laughs> All, right. All right, so that's a full five point salvo coming in. Right torso. Right torso it is. All right, Whitworth back into the woods. Two LRM racks into that. Clint, he needs eights. Oh boy, not happy. There he is, hiding in the woods. He's at least an inch in, right? He is, fleeing for, for his life over there. Uh, so he's gonna fire down at the Toro, and uh, I need eights to hit. 
Here we go, LRM5. And it misses. That's it's disappointing, Kevin. Disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think next up we're going to start with the, uh, we're going to continue on, I should say, with the Centurion. I need to blow some holes in this Whitworth here. I need a 6 on the LRM10. I need a 7 on the PPC. Can I do it? Here we go. Perhaps it's heavy fog, Kevin. Maybe we, <laughs> perhaps we miscalculated. Uh, I'm going to move right into the uh, the rifleman here. He's got a much uh, much more manageable number. Needs sixes to hit here. Two AC5s, large laser. All right. Well, everything manages to hit. Thank the Lord here because that was an ugly pilot die roll. Rolling for location. It happened. Magic could happen. So uh, we've got 10 damage to the right arm. And then we have a floating critical here. Let's roll for location first. Center torso. Oh boy. So eight to the CT. Is it a critical hit? Rolling on camera. <laughs> eight or better. Kevin's allergic to through armor criticals. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a critical? Critical hit. Turn four damage report. Tragedy strikes on the Redstone Ranger's side. That Whitworth goes up in smoke. The rifleman just aiming down, finding a crack in the armor, hitting that engine, hitting the ammo bin. Catastrophic explosion ensues. Uh, the rest of the lance okay. The Toro down to five points of heat. Now on the Atrian Knight side, the Clint expert pilot dodging left and right, barely taking any damage, just a little nick on that right torso. Otherwise, the land's still in great shape. Turn five, here it is. So, I won the initiative again. I'm on a hot streak. Yeah. Um, you're down a mech, the, the mushroom cloud <laughs> erupting from the chest of that Whitworth. Um, so, what, what, did you, uh, what did you do here with your forces? A bit of a scramble? Yeah, a, a change in pattern. So, that raven just gave up. On the wasp, <laughs> so he's not pursuing that centurion firing at long extreme range, but getting his two medium and SRM finally. He's finally in the action. Yeah. Uh, Toro turned to save his buddy, only to realize he's a flaming wreck. Uh, but we'll be firing into that Clint. It's going to be a tough shot, but PPC to the face sometimes works. And then Wolfhound kind of pursuing that track to the back. Going to be turning and shooting that rifleman in the back with three mediums. Hopefully Oof. get a little penetration there. You never know. If you could do it, so could I. Yeah, well, you're the, you are the uh, crowned king of, you know, coring things out. Even in the last campaign, is the run-by sighting on the, the Cyclops. These things uh, scar me for life, Kevin. Uh, so anyway, on the beef up your rear armor. <laughs> I just put all my armor on the rear now. Um, so the wasp feels real good about his life. Um, so Making he, a nest in the trees. <laughs> just chilling. Uh, so he's going to uh, fire down at the Toro with an LRM-5. Uh, he's, he's safe put. The Centurion's been just chilling back here for a while. Uh, nothing changing there except for his target. PPC LRM-10 going into the Toro. Clint. Uh, he pulled quite the maneuver now in the back left-hand quadrant uh, from my perspective there uh, and is uh, intentionally as close as he can be to that Toro. So I try to get within a uh, substantial minimum range of those LRMs. Not quite there for the PPC, but hopefully he can sustain that damage. Firing a medium laser and a large laser at the Toro. And then the rifleman moving forward a little bit, lumbering up the field. Uh, he will be firing two auto cannon fives and a large laser again, also at the Toro. So everything, all four of my entire lance priming up that Toro, we're going to see what we can do. So the score still remains five to three, though. Um, that could change this turn. Uh, you are in right now. You are in three quadrants. Um, so we would each get a point. So I mean, if if things stand, it would be six to four. You would still be. In command here, so uh, it's getting it's getting tense. We'll see what happens. Shooting is coming up right now. All right, the Toro. 
looking for a lucky PPC to the face. Needs an eight to hit that Clint. Come on. I haven't seen this PPC hit once today. Huh. We'll move on to the Wolfhound. Sounds good. You're, you're focused there. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at him. So also nice. needs an eight shooting into the rear of that <clears throat> rifleman. God darn it. And last. Old reliable. Last but not least. He is old reliable. He needs an eight as well. Get something. Yeah. Not your day. Consolation prize. So that is CT. It's a seven. All right. So CT uh, on the Centurion, but otherwise, here it luck. comes. Luck falls with the Eagle. So moving on to the Knights. We'll be back in just a minute. Centurion is up. Looking at that Toro, bounding across the battlefield. So uh, firing a PPC and an LRM ten. Uh, these things need 7 and 8 to hit, respectively. So 7 on the LRM, 8 on the PPC. The PPC hits. It's the first time, I think. So I'm in that front arc of the Toro. Uh, it's a leg shot. So that is right leg, 10 points leg? to the Toro. I don't know. Let's, let's get down and check. We'll be right back with that. All right, so the Clint's up next. We did check. There is a good line of sight. So that Centurion dealt 10 to the leg on the Toro. Uh, the Clint is up next. Now, the Clint here firing a large laser and a medium needs sevens and eights to hit here. So, <sighs> nothing. Man, this guy needs to go. <laughs> He's got to go to target practice when he gets home. Um, we're going to move to the Wasp. So the Wasp here just lobbing an LRM in. His, his uh, TN's getting slowly better throughout the game. So he started at a 10, now he's down to a 7. So need a 7 to hit here. Here we go. All right, gets it. For clusters, gets it. So five points coming into the Toro. I think I'm in your left side arc. And that is a seven. So what is that, a left torso, I believe? We'll check the chart, and we'll be right back. The Rifleman, ready to unload here. I need sevens on those AC5s, seven on the large laser. Just group firing this, as I have been all night. Ugh, all right, well, that's out. 10 damage though, so I think that's gonna force a piloting check. Magic could happen. No floating criticals, unfortunately. Uh, that would have been. <laughs> I, just, I just quit right <laughs> It's now. not even. Uh, so it looks like five to the right arm, five to the right leg, and uh, we'll do that piloting check, and then we'll get to the damage recap. Turn 5 damage report on the Redstone Rangers side with the Whitworth destroyed. The entire lance turns its focus to that Toro, delivers a substantial amount of damage, and knocks that mech to the ground, the Toro up to 7 points of heat. On the Atrian Knight side, uh, some fire across the board there. Still can't land anything on that Clint. Just an unlucky round in general, but the mission isn't over yet. All right, it is turn six here on the battle grid. Um, pretty intense. So I won initiative yet again. I think I've won five out of six turns this game. That's been a boon for the Atrian Knights. So, Kev, you had to move first. What did you do? Well, the Tauros stood up. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> Fair point. Raven pursued that Centurion, and so did the Wolfhound. The Wolfhound managed to sneak up right behind him. Going to be blasting lasers right in that rear armor panel, hopefully. Ugh. Don't but like it. Toro will be launching LRMs across the way at the Rifleman. He okay. just can't keep up with that Clint. Uh, but like I said, the, the Centurion's sort of getting the, the focus fire of what I got left. The light sandwich, as it were. <laughs> the Raven Wolfhound sandwich. <laughs> uh, it's a Tarian classic. Uh, all right, so that's a little concerning. If you uh, if you knock that Centurion out, I'm going to be hard pressed to, to regain control of the, the my side of the table, really. But uh, I'm really going to hope to counter punch that Toro and knock it out. But we'll see. Um, so what happened on my side? Um, rifleman ran up the field, turned the Clint, sprinted around behind the Toro. 
Uh, the Wasp still sitting on that hill, I'm gonna be lobbing LRMs in. I need him in this back quadrant to hold it down. And the Centurion backed up, tried to get out of medium range of that Raven and did so, but then again, got outmaneuvered by that Wolfhound. So he's firing PPC LRM 10 medium laser at the Raven, everyone else going for the Toro. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, shooting coming up next. Tarians will kick it off again. All right. El Toro, two LRM5s across that rifleman. His days are not looking well. He needs sixes. Wow. You know, I don't like this kind of intensity in my missing. All right, All right. so both LRM5 clusters hit. Oh, yes. boy. Give me it. <laughs> All right, so, CTN heads. Yeah, that's two solid hits on that rifleman. All right, starting off with the Raven up top on that Centurion, two mediums and an SRM-6. He needs sevens. All right. Mmm. Ugh, man. Almost a full house. Just not getting that. Need lots of lots of dice there. Kevin loves rolling his SRMs, as we know. I do. And for three up on the clusters. Yeah, let's check that. Ugh, dude. It's not I'm having today. Oh, you missed four. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to tell on the view screen when I'm not looking at the actual dice. Location. Pretty concentrated, so some left torso. Left side. Yeah, a little bit of left arm. All right, Wolfie. Needs sixes, just a light show in, in the rear. Come on, dice gods. <laughs> oh my goodness, Wait, still. You got two, but yeah, I mean, you were just... Uh, <laughs> I mean, when you see that pile of die too, it's like, dude. You're struggling. All right, so what do we got here? Ooh. <sighs> There's a left torso. I think he's got more than five on each location, but we yeah. need to find out. All right, so starting with some retaliation from the Atrian Knights, the Centurion firing at the Raven needs sevens on the PPC and the LRM-10, nine on the medium laser. Here we go. Depressing. All right, rolling for clusters. Depressing. Mm. Depressing. Uh, this fog proving just impenetrable. Uh, five points of damage to the right light is all we get out of that salvo. Rifleman is up, sighting down that Toro. Needs sixes on everything, AC5s and large laser. So here we go. Ten points of damage coming in. Uh, looks like we've got a center torso shot and a left arm. All right, that Clint firing directly into the rear arc of the Toro. Uh, can we get lucky here? Maybe. Need only fives to hit. It should be a pretty uh, pretty easy shot as we were point blank, and that Toro has no uh, attacker mod, or target mod, rather. Here we go. Okay, so that's, we're off to a good start. Double CT, here we come. No, no, that's, uh, whoops, that was a right arm and a right leg. Wasp still sniping through the trees here. <laughs> just just firing a sustained volley of LRM fives. Uh, so here we go. I need a uh, six to hit. Gets it. Cluster. Gets it. Location. Come on, right leg. Ah, wrong leg. That's left leg. So left leg takes. Actually, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm in the left side arc. So before you mark that damage. A nine on the left side is actually right torso. So, it's gonna be five to the right torso, which also not what I wanted. But that is the end of shooting for the Atrian Knights. All right, some physical attack coming into play with the Wolfhound doing a double fist punch to the <laughs> rear of that Centurion. Ah. However, he's missing one hand actuator, so he's at a slight disadvantage with the right arm but uh, needs sevens and eights. So the little die will be the non-hand actuator that needs the eight. Okay. All right, so you get, you get the, the hand. Yeah, get the good one. 
Got the good, good hand punch. Location in the rear, I'll mind you. Uh, it's just a d6, right? Yes, correct. So that is a two. <laughs> where, <laughs> where is that shark? Uh, uh, left torso rear. Oh, wait Same a minute. One. Oh boy, that could be a critical hit, Kevin. So it's going to be four damage. Yeah, that's going to go through. So roll, roll, let's see if you let's see if you nail a critical hit. Let's get this on camera. An eight or better. Do you eviscerate? Me? Oh, there's ammo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yellow's outer. Uh, it's just one. One d6. Right. Reroll a five or a six. Four is wow. what you're looking for. <sighs> no luck. But you did knock no out luck. that. No luck. Did knock out that LRM10. You gotta feel good about that, Kev. No? Not at all. Not at all. One, all one right. fire and blood. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this finally wraps up the turn, um, and so we will go into the damage recap next. Turn six damage report on the Tarian Concordat side. The Free Worlds League continues to prime that Toro, tearing into the right arm and the right leg, destroying a foot actuator, hampering that mech's movement, and also drilling into the Raven from the Centurion, damaging that right leg just a little bit. But the Raven and Wolfhound striking back, sweet retaliation. They have that Centurion backed up, the Wolfhound punching through the left torso. Uh, ripping into that LRM-10, physically tearing it out of the mech, almost hitting an ammo bin. And on top of that, a crushing headshot to the rifleman. But thankfully, that pilot still conscious. All right, guys, we are back. Turn seven. Lots of action. Um, so the score currently, the Redstone Rangers have six. The Atrian Knights clawing their way back here up to five points. But Tarians are still in the lead of this mission in terms of objective points. Now, uh, pivotal turn, in my opinion. I lost initiative. So I had to move first, had some tough decisions to make. Rifleman's planting. Uh, the Clint skittered away from that Toro. The uh, Centurion with its rear torso ripped open, turned, backed up against the building to just hope to find some protection. And the Wasp here exposing itself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me take that back. The wasp moving out into the open, sounds better, uh, jumping over the trees here. <laughs> All four of my mechs going to be firing down. <laughs> the exposed wasp is going to be distracting the raven. Yeah. All four of the mechs firing down on the raven. <laughs> Uh, that I, don't like, I don't like that indecent exposure in my rear. Well, is it? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it just keeps piling on. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at the Raven. He's got no movement mod. The CM9 is in that, uh, that two-on-one scenario, so we want to try to help him out in the backfield. So we'll see. Um, Kev, what, what do you have got going on on your side? All right. I'll try to go much quicker. So we found planted, alpha striking, dumping oh. everything he's got into that Centurion, hoping to... You know, pop a critical. Oh. And the Raven going to be firing everything it can, but the machine guns also okay. focusing on that Centurion. So they're standing still. They, you know, it's, it's fish in a barrel at this point. Yeah. Uh, but still, he could survive that. Uh, the Toro was sort of the undecided one. He just kind of backed up a little to get some space because he's hurting pretty bad on that foot. Um, I think we're going to try our luck. It's a harder shot but I can do more damage if I hit the PPCs firing it over at that clint. Yeah, I mean, pretty much anything that the PPC hits will find internal structure, maybe except for the CT, so we'll I see. I just haven't had any luck with these eight rolls. Uh, yeah, it's a high mod. It's a high mod. Very fast little bugger. Uh, so we'll get into shooting. Atrian Knights kicking it off first. All right, the Atrian Knights here, Centurion. Firing at that raven, backed into a corner. I need just fives and sixes to hit this raven. So six on the medium laser, five on the PPC, and the LRM-10. Here we go. Okay, everything hits. Rolling for clusters. All right, so that's going to be 25 points of damage the coming in. The LRM was knocked out. Right. So that's 15 points of damage. <laughs> Damage. All right, that's what I'm here for. 15 points of damage coming. I'm just testing you. Yeah. I'm glad one of us is paying attention. Uh, of course I hit with everything, right? He's just firing blanks at this point. So here we go. It's the small mercies. All 
Alright, so CT takes 10 points of damage, left torso takes 5. The rifleman firing across at that raven needs 4s and 5s. Good, good pilot in there. Also, yeah. nice long range weapon. So, here we go. Alright, so everything hits. Mm. Looking for location. Two more pings on the CT, so 10 more to the CT, and 8 to that left leg. There he is, exposing himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fire at that raven. Uh, so, this guy needs sevens to hit that poor wasp. A um, creeper in the woods. <laughs> so it hits, uh, cluster lands, so 5 points of damage directly in the rear arc. Six. So it's going to be rear right torso taking five points of damage. Sighting down the raven. Maybe some cover. We'll legs. see. Legs. The legs are guarded. Legs are guarded. There's there's quite a bit of rocky terrain in the way there. So the Clint needs six on the AC2, seven on the large laser. Got them both. Anything but the legs. All right, now I believe, Kev, I am in your left side arc as well. I'm sorry, your right side arc. Correct. My left, your right. Right. <laughs> Here we go. For location. Ugh. Floating critical. And a, what is that, a right leg, I believe? Right arm. Uh, in the right side arc, I think it's a right leg. Oh, I don't know. We'll wow. check it. Yeah, you're right. I forgot we'll check about it. that. So let's roll for location here on this floating critical. Here we go. Who's in the right leg? Uh, just two points of damage. Just a measly two points. Now, for that floating critical, the location. All right, Toro, hoping the eight finally strikes. PPC over at the Clint needs an eight. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Wolfhound, alpha striking. Everything he's got simply needs a four. Failable, in my mind. No. Oh, God. All right, so this is straight up in the face, right? Not what I wanted. I think the head armor will hold. However, I see right leg, I see left... I'm sorry. I see center torso, left arm, left yeah. leg, and yeah, that brutal headshot, which will force a consciousness check. All right, so Raven's coming up next. So yeah, so actually that was no left leg, that was double left arm shot. So, after we, after we got to the record sheet, we realized. Um, so this Raven now, Kevin. Yeah, Raven, looking now to take advantage of some of those exposures, needs six. So much exposure, <laughs> yeah, how much exposure? <laughs> oh man, SRM six, two mediums. Oh man, just can't get lucky. I'll take it. All right, All right. so a CT nine. and a left leg. All right. So I think that Centurion may live to fight another day, but definitely will be forced to take a piloting check. Turn seven damage report on the Tarian side. That Raven getting primed up the entire Free Worlds League Lance, trying to help out that Centurion. The Raven just getting ripped into, CT stripped out and the Wasp delivering a telling blow to the rear right torso of that Raven, but no critical hits on any account. The Wolfhound starting to get toasty. On the Free Worlds League side, everyone just drilling into the Centurion, that mech getting knocked around like a rag doll. Headshot, pilot is still conscious, shoulder actuator is hit. It is beat up, but that Centurion still in the fight. All right, here we are, turn eight. After movement, so the Atrian Knights managed to win initiative, uh, which could have been life-saving for that Centurion. Kevin, mm. the Redstone Rangers, they're feeling it. Um, what's, what's the strategy at this point? Live, survive. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And I'm done. The Toro uh, <laughs> continuing his rear march. Yeah. Uh, but we've... we've kind of we're, we're 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 taking some risks obviously we have to at this point so 
uh, Toro's just sort of backing up, getting out of the, the focus fire and alpha striking over at the rifleman. Oh, wow. Okay. The raven and the wolfhound decided to blitzkrieg in at the uh, rifleman as well, though also both firing everything they got. Whoa. Everything they can. The only the raven can't fire the machine guns, but otherwise... Yeah. So wolf, wolfhound's gone full... Wolf, wolfman's going full moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, that shut down be, the process. Yeah, that's that's going to be quite the heat spike there. That's going to be interesting, but uh, I'd see, but. see the play there. Yeah, it's kind of do or die. All right, well, uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, that uh, that rifleman can can stand up to that just that brutal barrage there. Um, so on my side, I ran. Um, actually, I walked the Clint backwards behind those fuel tanks for some cover. Uh, he's going to be shooting over at the Raven. I've got the Wasp coming forward, running down off the hill. He's going to be primarily firing into LRM-5 at the Toro, secondary firing at the Raven with a medium laser. I need a 12 to hit there, but I figured why not. Um, the Centurion is going to be firing through, he's going to split the difference here, fire through the Wolfhound and Raven at the Toro with his PPC. Whoa. And then going to secondary fire his medium laser at the Raven in that left side arc. Um, and then lastly, Rifleman Alpha Striking. Three medium lasers, large laser, two AC-5s at the Raven. Um, so I don't really have any super favorable target numbers here. Lots of high stuff for anywhere from 7 to 12. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. So, this that is said... The, I think it could be the pivotal round. Literally. I think this will be the defining round. Yeah. Yeah, it could be the last one. We'll see. So, uh, that's that. So, shooting coming up next, right? Yeah. I'm ready. All right. Wolfhound is starting us off with just an energy explosion. You know, burst. It's going to fry his engine, but whatever. Uh, he needs sevens and eights. Seven on the large. All right. Here we go. Whew. Mm. One medium. <sighs> So, little leg shot there. All right, Toro also running hot here, just trying to pull pull this one off. PPC two LRM fives needs sevens. Or I'm sorry, sixes and sevens. Six on the LRMs. It's doable. Yeah, it was doable. Everything hits. Ah, sure. uh, <laughs> okay. Well, um, PPC actually landed. Right, so you still get two 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 point clusters. Oh, that's right. And the PPC, and so that fourteen points of damage. Oh my goodness. Oh. Alright, well that's all packed in the left arm. Alright, the Raven. Two mediums and SRM six needs eight all around. <laughs> Uh, give up. Retreat, retreat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, these things happen. I think the yeah. Atrian Knights get one I more. I don't even want to watch you shoot me. <laughs> just, just, I'll just film it by myself and yeah. let you know. You can watch the bat rep and see what happens. Let me know how fires they put out. The wasp raining death from its, <laughs> from its LRM5. Uh, need an 8 to hit here. Stinger lands. All right, so it's a two-point cluster. Two points to that right side. Uh, this is straight onto the Toro, so oh. left side arc. So it's just going to be left torso. Speaking of right side, I am also secondarily firing. How much did you hit? Uh, just two points on that cluster. The wasp needs nice a twelve to hit this raven. Kevin will be very disappointed. Uh, I did uh, not. <laughs> I'm already disappointed. Yeah, uh, I don't know where it goes from there. <laughs> All right, so let's just roll right into the wasp. Just kind of 
buzzing around doing his thing. Uh, the Clint firing across at the Raven here. Uh, I need nines and tens, so not easy. Nine on the AC2, ten on that large laser. The AC2 hits. So this is going to be in the front arc of the Raven. And that is a right torso. So right torso on that Raven takes two. Centurion's up next here. First, he's going to be sighting down the Toro in between the Wolfhound and the Raven. Uh, primary firing here needs an eight to hit. Gets it. Location. We're looking for a five here. I'll knock off that leg. Wow, so close. Four. So that's going to be, uh, is that right arm? Right arm's going to take ten points. And we've got the secondary fire from that Centurion. Uh, I'm going to need a nine on the Raven. Here we go. Just miss. All right, so here we are, the Rifleman twisting to the right at that Raven, blazing down the field here. I need sevens and nines. Sevens on the uh, the AC-5s and the large, nines on those medium lasers. Not an easy shot. I'm debating on whether I should chain fire or not. Feels feels like I should, but I'm going to group fire. Here we go. Feeling lucky. Not, <laughs> not lucky. Uh, so, <laughs> everything misses except for the large laser. Can I hit that center torso, Kevin? Probably. Ah, so close. So that is going to be uh, left torso instead. Turn 8 damage report on the Redstone Ranger's side. That Raven soaking damage, still living to fight another day. Uh, just could not be brought down. The Toro, right arm ripped off, still limping along, up to 8 points of heat. And that Wolfhound, up to 14 points of heat, just going for broke. But that pilot does maintain control, avoids the shutdown, so those mechs are still in the fight. Now the Free Worlds League on the 5th Atrian Knight side. Uh, everybody switching to the Riflemen. The Tarians trying to bring that lead mech down, but the Riflemen seems just completely unfazed. A little bit of damage across the board. Luck is not with the Tarians, and the Atrian Knights seem all but unstoppable. All right, here we are on the blasted battlefield. Light fog covering the entire expanse here, making it difficult the Atrian Knights to chase down their withdrawing Redstone Rangers. So that Raven decided he's taking too much punishment. He pulled out the Toro with that wounded leg, also pulling out the Wolfhound, although unscathed. Doesn't seem like favorable odds. So this is going to be a victory for the Atrian Knights. It was a close battle. Uh, eight objective points to six objective points at the end of uh, turn eight there. So we're going to be moving right into the after action report. So stay tuned. It's coming right now. There you have it, 5,000 points wrapped up. Ah, uh, felt bigger than 5,000 points. That was a, that was a, it was a tough match, it was a scrap. Um, I, I thought I had an edge early. I thought, I, I thought I, you were gonna I crush the, me. You know, tactical placement, it's just that Whitworth. Mm. It was out for so long, I was just fighting an uphill battle the whole way through <sighs> after that. Yeah, I mean, it's the that is the that is the magic of battle tech. I mean, you get that one lucky through armor critical, and that was it, right? And uh, and I got two. I rolled an eleven, right? I got two critical hits mm -hmm. with the confirmation. So even if I didn't hit the ammo, we would have been in forced withdrawal. So it, it was and just you hit the CT, right? With eight slots, like full <laughs> full CT, and you hit the ammo. So uh, such is life. Such is life. Yeah. I feel I do feel bad. I feel like you had some ugly, ugly turns of the dice there. The, Lots of missing. Was my magic number all night, and I just could not hit eights. Yeah, yeah, it, I, was, you know, uh, it was just was just past that bell curve. But all that outside of all that stuff, I really liked the double blind. 
Yeah. I had no idea what I was going up against. Uh, when you revealed that first wolfhound, I was like, obviously it's Kevin. I right. mean, there's going to be a wolfhound. I knew that. But the Toro was a big surprise. The Whitworth was a big surprise. I wanted to pounce on that wasp, but man, he was so annoying in those woods. I just knew it would be... Yeah. Because I kept losing initiative. So without initiative, right. I knew he, it's impossible. he would just dance around. And I was like, I, I just gave up on it. By then, I, I had lost the Whitworth, and it was just sort of... Right. Yeah, and it was I a no bargain, <laughs> right? I think it was like maybe 500 or so BV with the... Maybe 600 with the pilot mod in there or something. Uh, so really cheap out of the whole 5,000, which freed up some points for that Centurion and the Rifleman, which were a little meatier. Um, right. And yeah, the Rifleman was pretty reliable. Still doesn't have like that bite that it, that you kind of expect from it. I it don't was, know. It was sustained damage. Yeah, like it, it was, was a, like it was a good eighteen points every turn, know, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, love the Toro. Does tend to get hot, but man, I love just dedicated fire yeah. sport max. And you swapped right an SRM six or an SRM four for an LRM, another LRM five, or is that just the way? No, that, I think that was stock Toro. Yeah, it's a nice Mac. It's cool. Uh, the one that was pretty wild, the Whitworth, I had upgraded to LRM-15s and basically downgraded all the lasers just to make it a uh, missile boat. Oh my gosh, that thing is devastating. You but know I love still, the Whitworth. Uh, yeah. One of my favorites, so really cool. Yeah, I thought that was fun though. And it was neat with the fog, right? I, we really, early in the game, especially when positioning is so important, I was running my heavies up the middle and when that Whitworth popped out, I was like, oh man, I thought I was going to get crushed, mm -hmm. but you know, man. And the Raven, I mean, unfortunately... That the wasp tied him up. He really couldn't do anything. I should have sent him elsewhere. I yeah. Wish I wish I had gone after the rifleman early, but that's the thing. With the double blind, it was sort of like you just don't huh. know. Right. So that's, yeah. yeah. So you know, you have to kind of change tactics after you've already kind of advanced yeah. twelve inches into the map or further. Right. Right. And yeah, when you're deploying, right, you really don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I guess I didn't even think about it in that context. But that's a great point, right? I wanted to put the wasp over by that hill with the trees because I knew his jump jets were going to help out. Um, I think in retrospect it was solid. You yeah. Know? I mean, I, I mean things could have gone differently if the Whitworth was around longer, but I think you would have probably uh, and won. the initiative. If I had won an initiative round, yeah. I might have been able to yeah get my hands around that darn wasp's throat. That guy exposing himself, <laughs> <laughs> exposing himself in the woods to your rear. Uh, I don't think that could uh, could have gone any worse linguistically, uh, but <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Makes for good uh, lore. Makes for good lore. Great lore. <laughs> uh, so listen, it was a good game, uh, well played. I, I definitely got lucky on that one, uh, but you know what? Doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning is winning. Vin Diesel said that. Winning is half the battle. GI Joe said that. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter, man. Isn't it learning is it? I don't even remember. We're going to have to look at Knowledge. Those, something like battle. that. Maybe. Post it in the comments. Remind <laughs> us. We don't remember our childhood in the 80s. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, really excited to bring another battle report to you and get back in the groove of things here. Uh, so stay tuned. A lot more exciting stuff coming your way. Anything to add, Kev? I want to go home. Have a good night, guys. We'll catch you soon. <laughs>